Are you frustrated with online dating? Confused by all the new apps and fancy dating sites? Do you find yourself choosing the wrong person again and again? Well, studies show that hiring a dating coach can maximize your online dating experience. So no worries, I've got you. And I've created a virtual course called Doing Dating Right. It's a five video series that you can complete at your own pace in your own space, right at home. How to write your online dating bio, pick that perfect picture, and so much more. Want more info? Go to my website at jenniferherbits.com. Again, it's jenniferherbits.com. Good morning, good morning. This is Doing Relationships Right. And I'm Jennifer Herbits. I'm your host every Tuesday and Friday, but this is Tuesday. Look at this beautiful woman. If you can see her in my podcast studio today, and if you can hear, this is Sadie Marie. Hi, Sadie. Hi, 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 Jennifer. Let's do this. I'm so damn excited. I'm just gonna we're just gonna jump right in here. Jump right in. Okay, so I've got this sexy lady with me today, and um, she's all fired up, and I'm all fired up because this is my friend, and I can say she's my friend because she is. Sadie Marie is the host of the Sadie Marie. It's Sadie's Divorced and Happy Podcast. It sure is. All the delicious fun life after divorce. So much delicious fun. But you know that. It's so delicious. I do. I know all about your deliciousness. Mm -hmm. So um, listeners, you're in for such a treat today because we're going to talk about all kinds of fabulous, sexy, fun. And Sadie, I'm going to let you talk because my listeners are sick of me. (laughs) They're they're like, Jennifer, shut the, just shut it. Um, But we're going to talk about something, lots of stuff. First of all, I want to touch on a couple things so we can talk about this. Um, Tell me your backstory. Tell me how you started. How did this podcast come from? Where did it come from? How did it burst into fabulousness and touch on some things for me later, ethical non-monogamy. E-N-M. But we'll go there. E- oh, it has, it's my it has an acronym. house girl. Wait, it has an acronym? It sure does. Oh my God. I love that. Okay. So tell me, Sadie, how do we start? Where do we come from? Well, I, you know, I'd love to talk about my honeymoon stage when I Let's do it. started my act two. So in midlife, I started an act two. I left a marriage and I focused a lot on myself, which was a brand new thing for me. And part of that was understanding that I really like sex, like a lot, like a lot, a lot with myself, with others. And my opinion on sex really shifted because I was raised, I don't know about you, but I was raised to be a really good girl. My dad is a retired minister. I know the backstory goes way back, Jennifer. I didn't know that. I know. Lutheran, ELCA. So, and I lived in a small town and I was, you know, watched all eyes on me, right? Being the minister's daughter in a small town. So I was conditioned to be very good, especially around sexuality. And I can honestly say that I did not start really fully understanding what sex could be like until I was about 46 years old. I know. Oh it's gosh. so true. And you know, but you, I think this is like the perfect coming out for you because sex positivity like is all the rage right now. It is. And I love it because I, if I would have been given that gift as a girl by culture years ago, what would my experiences be like now around relationships? Oh, because okay. sex is such a huge, as you know, yeah. being a, an expert in this field, sex is such a huge component in a healthy relationship. Absolutely. And if you don't have a healthy sexual identity, that is a that is a huge barrier to connecting with someone, especially a man who has been given so much permission from culture to be a sexual being, and so has really evolved that part of himself, right? Which I'm happy about. That's fantastic. So for me, having this act two and having the freedom to explore my sexuality has been such a gift. I mean, can you just see my energy? I'm like, yes, oh, I love yes. it. I love it, and that's why I love you. I, I think we connect on that level. So yes, yes I love it. Okay, so you started the- so so yeah so 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 that that sexual renaissance really sparked something in me where I wanted to talk about this topic this hot juicy topic I use I like to say burning you know burning questions burning topics so I love talking about this with my girlfriends and I have started informally what I call a sex club in fact my sex club met on Monday and we it's such a great space because you know like women we get a book and we talk about the book and. And and that's, you know, fun bonding experience, but we don't really tap into things like sexuality. I don't think as women in groups where we can really freely talk about it without judgment. Agree. And you know, what's funny to me, and I was going to tell you this the other day is that when I used to, when I was married, Mm -hmm. we used to get together and talk about sex, about the sex we didn't have. Right. We used to complain. Yes. Complain the negative stuff. Like, oh my God, he didn't make me come or, oh my God. I was like, and I was so bored. Or how boring it is. Right. (laughs) Right. Do you know what I'm saying? I was like. 
oh my god, it's been six. But then, and then, right, and then also, like, I feel like everyone was lying about it. Like the right. girls who were like, oh my god, I have it all the time. We have sex five times a week. I'm like, you're still, you're a lying bitch. You're lying. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, and I don't, I don't try to look too back on, okay. on my marriage in the sense of like, what if I would have been more, but, but now it's like, wow, I have this awareness. I have this um, appreciation awesome. for this part of myself that I am freedom. And so it's fun to share it with other women. And I think that the more we have these types of conversations and normalize it and sex positivity is wanting that, right? Amazing. S- being a sexual person is a positive thing. Just like being emotionally in tune with yourself is clearly a very positive thing. And you look at men and their experiences, and this is one thing I've learned on my podcast, and I'll go back to what initiated the podcast, but what I've really learned is that men in midlife are really wanting to become more emotionally available, you know, and we as society need to give them spaces. Like I have my sex club, so it's my free, you know, my safe space. I have my podcast. I go on other podcasts. I talk about my sexual renaissance all the time because I want to normalize it. Like this is normal being a sexual being. So yes. I have a question for you before I'm interrupting you because here's my thing. So do you feel like women are I feel like women don't judge. They some women judge other women, but I feel like. Do you think that men judge judge us too? Because I feel like sometimes men judge me judge me less than other women when I say I'm sex positive and I talk about my sexuality. I, how do we stop that? In your opinion, talking well, about it more? that's that it's conversations like this. Yeah, it's, it's organizing okay. what I have, what I call a sex club, which which is something that I want to bring out more into the world and for my listeners to participate in. So that's something I'd love to talk about a little bit later, mm-hmm. but you know, I think it's just having these candid conversations and, and just owning it and showing that joy around it and comfort. Um, mm-hmm. I think also just recognizing that women there, are, you know, a lot of women have been sexually assaulted. I have not, I have not mm-hmm. been. And so that isn't my experience and that, you know, and having that sensitivity that had I been, maybe that I'd have a different journey. So it's having that sensitivity okay. and also having that, that safe space. So I think that all those things help this, help women and men in relationship move forward to more positivity in general. Okay. So go back. I keep interrupting because I have so many things to ask you. Okay. So the podcast came about. Yeah. So I, you know, I just felt so much joy, happiness, freedom after divorce. It wasn't like it was all, you know, a walk in the park. I clearly have had my grief. I've done my work. I've seen my therapist. I continue to see a therapist, all those things just to continue to grow me as a human. But what was the message that I want to put out to the world is that life after divorce, you know, there's so much positivity. There's so much possibility. There's so much new things to learn. There's so many, I've met so many cool people like you. I never would have met you. I Boy, would right? I be missing out had I never, you know, started an act two, a new chapter in my life and, and started a new thing where I put myself out there through a podcast, telling my story, inviting others to do the same. And, you know, that's what my divorce has given me. And just an under better understanding of myself through that process is that I have a voice and I want to share my story. And, you know, our stories are interconnected, but they're still our individual stories, but we can learn from each other. And we find these common things like around sexuality, like around emotional intimacy, like around how we want to date now in midlife or what we want from a relationship that's different than in our 20s, especially, you know, what we want in a relationship with ourself. And I'm sure with your listener, you talk a lot about knowing self. You have to know yourself well. First, right? Obviously, you Absolutely. know this in order to have a positive relationship with a significant other. So I'm still on that journey, which is why I'm still ethically non monogamous and not hey, monogamous. Look at that I'm segue. still learning about myself. Okay, can you tell that you're a podcaster? I love having podcasters <laughs> on because it was just that beautiful segue that you just did for me right into that. I know. Because I just was like, oh, look at you. Everyone listen to this. You're just a fantastic guest and podcaster. So ethical monogamy. I can't even say it. E-N-M. Ethical non-monogamy. So it just yes. rolls off my it just rolls tongue, off tongue because I've been saying it for three years now, Jennifer. Right. So I don't. So here's the thing. I don't know if I, if I explain first of all to my listener what it is. And then I'm going to say, I don't know if I believe in it or if I don't. Okay. Do, do sure. I? I'm not sure. Well, you we'll find me. out. We're going to find out right now. Here we go. I'm okay. not sure. Go ahead. Okay. So ethical non-monogamy is when an individual like myself chooses to date knowing that I am not at this time seeking a monogamous relationship. I think oftentimes people go into dating because, which is great. They're seeking a monogamous relationship. They want to have that type of dynamic in their life. I right now am not seeking that. So I feel ethically when I'm dating 
I need to share. Like I'm ethically non-monogamous. I'm dating other people right now. I'm dating to just have new experiences, to learn more about myself. Dating has taught me so much about myself. And I don't want to set someone down the wrong path because I am the type of person where I will meet you and be like, well, what do you think about that? Well, how, and, and someone will engage with me right away and they might feel close. And I, you know, I divulge things appropriately. I am all about appropriate, you know, disclosure, right? Sure, sure. Healthy disclosure. But I am a curious person and I ask the deeper questions and that can lead to people feeling more intimate, more close to you, right? When you ask right. kind of beyond the surface. So I also like to kind of set the stage where I might be, I am a curious person. I want to get to know you, but but you're not the only person I'm getting to know. And, and you should know that. So that maybe if you don't want to get to know me in the same way, you can choose yes. otherwise. I love this. Okay. So I have so many questions for you. Sure. So basically you're doing exactly what I tell my clients. Oh, good. I, t- I tell my clients when they go on date number one, date whatever, to explain, to put it out there exactly what you expect out of your relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm just doing, I just say the opposite. So mm-hmm. like, cause most of my clients are looking for a monogamy. relationship, mm-hmm. monogamy. So they say on their first date, look, I'm looking for a relationship. If you're not interested. I need to clarify something. Please. I am looking for relationships. Oh, okay. I'm just not looking for monogamy. Okay, so we're talking about sex specifically. No. No, I want intimacy. I want emotional connection. No, no, I'm talking, okay, so you want emotional connection, but you want it with more than one person. Correct. I want more than one relationship simultaneously. Okay, so the whole, the whole, so you do actually want the entire relationship, not just, okay, so let me ask questions because I'm, yeah. I'm confused. No. So you want to have sex and the relationship, but just with more than one person. Correct. Okay, so... And that doesn't mean like, I mean, like there's, there's ethical non-monogamy. This is where it gets a little interesting. I yes, had an episode about this called Beyond Monogamy on my podcast. I need to listen to it. I yeah. It's, to I think it's episode number nine and I did okay. it with a dating coach, uh, Mr. Okay. Lucario. He's very candid. So there's ethical non That's like, you know, stepping. So there's ethical non-monogamy. Okay. There's polyamory. Right. What's the difference? Sure. So ethical non-monogamy is more, um, I'm dating not necessarily to seek love, but I am dating you know, to get to know people, to get to know myself, to have new experiences. I see. Maybe that will lead to love. I'm open to that. I'm not anti-love, but I'm not just on this traditional monogamous path, right? So so what if you did find love? Yeah. And you can find love in polyamory. So polyamory is more, I have more than one loving partner. I have maybe a primary partner and then I have a secondary partner and we have a loving relationship. Yes. We have emotional intimacy. We're clearly sexually connected. It's not just, uh, you know, sometimes people have open marriages and yes. they're just emotionally monogamous. Like I just did another podcast. I was a guest and that couple, they're swingers and, and they're emotionally right. monogamous, right? They don't have emotional intimacy with others, but they have sexual intimacy with others as a couple. So, I mean, it's just what's yeah, fascinating. I, I knew nothing me. about this when I was like married. I'm like, what's kink? What's Right. It's oh, also so interesting to me. It is fascinating, right? It's so, many so interesting. Well, because I'm such a jealous bitch that like, I'm like, I'm sorry, but if someone else, I'd be like, get the, f- I, I just, I think you have to know who you are. Oh, you have like, to be really strong in yourself. That's one thing this journey has taught me because I have partners and, and they are ethically, we're ethically non-monogamous. And I don't mean, I don't, I've learned through this okay. experience because I've tried a bunch of things. Like I, I used to be like, Oh, tell me about who's on, who you're dating. And you know, like I want to like, and then, and then I'm like, okay, I don't really want to know. I don't really want to know. I don't want to, oh, I don't know. I really don't want to know. So now I'm like, like, yeah, I don't need to know. No, no. I already no. know. So I don't need to know. No, <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like, la, 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 la. Right, right. Like, right. I, I have a great imagination, so I got it. I got it. Have fun. Work it out. Okay. Work it out. Okay, but questions for you. So what? It, that's my question exactly. Mm. So what happens? What happens when, okay, do you ever get to the point where you're like, I don't want, I, I, I don't, I just want to be with you and I don't want, just that, what happens then? Well, I haven't quite gotten to that place yet. I have gotten to okay. a place where I really like someone and that's yeah, been yeah. like a new thing for me. I'm like, oh, I like, I really like this person, but that's more about, I need to work out things in me. Cause if I have okay. like my insecurities or my inability to maybe, maybe to communicate something. And so I see it like, okay, I have this great opportunity to practice with this person. We're on the same path. We're kind of looking for the okay. same things in the sense where we're not really ready to have a committed monogamous relationship, but we still want to connect have meaningful connection, great okay. sex, great conversation. So this is awesome. Yeah. So I for me, it's episode. like I have this opportunity to grow as a human, you know, without needing you to be A, B, or C. You know, okay. like um yes. 
I think for me, before I can get back into a monogamous relationship, I'm just going to own it. I need to learn to have like a lot of comfort with myself and really fulfill myself in ways that maybe I wasn't as good at when I was married or in other monogamous relationships and needing the other to do things that maybe weren't fair, that I needed to have those fulfillments through other people or through other experiences, through myself. And so I've just learned until I have like this really strong comfort with myself and it's I'm growing girl over yeah. here in St. Paul yeah, I'm Minnesota like listening to this I'm, like, yeah. I'm thinking I'm thinking about some clients right now that I think this mm. would work beautifully for yeah because not everybody's ready for monogamy and then they sabotage it because they they're really not ready right where if you have this freedom to be like right now I'm ethically non-monogamous I'm choosing to learn a lot about myself I want great connection like you can have those things and ethically non-monogamous relationships it's not just about do my you my head you is, swear on is, show? You're swearing. Of me. course I'm swearing. Yeah, so what it's do you not mean just about fucking, fucking no. right? Like it's yes, yes, way yes. beyond that. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm way beyond that stage. Like that was like my first season after divorce. Well, of like, course, I'm that was way, everyone's. Yeah, I mean, that was everyone's. I'm like, let's go. tramp stamp on us and <laughs> bust out into the bars. So, <laughs> you know, I had a great time doing that, but that's not my lifestyle. Okay, yeah. I have a question. You're going to yeah. think I'm crazy right now because of sure. course I know you. Yeah. Did you ever think about doing coaching on this? If co-parenting during a pandemic taught us anything, it's that you need proof your kids are safe. With alcohol abuse on the rise, many co-parents are turning to the no-nonsense system committed to providing proof, protection, and peace of mind. Soberlink's alcohol monitoring system is the most convenient, reliable, and reasonable way for a parent to provide evidence that they are not drinking during parenting time. Soberlink's real-time alerts make it easy to negotiate with any party. Judges rest assured that the child is safe. Attorneys get court admissible evidence of sobriety, and both parents have empowerment and peace of mind. Do divorce right and trust the experts in remote alcohol monitoring technology to keep your kids safe, happy, and well-adjusted. To download the guide, five non-negotiables for embracing a new normal that I developed with Soberlink, visit www.soberlink.com backslash D-R-R. Because I think you'd be fantastic because I'm sitting here- uh, ethical going, non-monogamy? I think you'd be amazing. Because I'm sitting here going- Well, you planted I hit, the seed right today. I, I just did. I do this quite often. People come on my podcast and during the show, I actually make a career for them. Because <laughs> I'm seeing, this is what, you know me, this is what I do. I know you are very good at being I, in the moment, thinking of big yes, ideas. But I'm telling you because I'm sitting here going, wait a minute, I had no idea. I, I thought this was something totally different before we started this show. Truly? And now that honestly? truly, honestly, I look at my face. I'm not lying. Okay. I had no clue. Right. I thought it was something like you just like slept with a bunch of, I had no, no. idea. No. This is honestly, when I'm thinking about it in my head, I'm like, no. if everyone, I'm so happy about this podcast right now. Good. I want, when we hang up this, this thing, I'm going to like freak out Yay. because I think everyone needs to know what you're saying and understand it. Yes. And if you coached people, I think that I have like clients that I'm thinking right now that would really do like even if you came out of a really long-term like relationship mm-hmm. and you weren't ready to date again, mm-hmm. not even just a divorce, like I'm talking like a two-year relationship. Oh yeah, any relationship, right, right, when it ends. This, right. would, be, this would be fantastic. This is what people need before they jump into another yes. relationship. Because if I was to do that, the same thing would just happen to me, right? It's already happening to me in, in the relationships I've been in ethically non-monogamously, right? right. So it's right. just, I mean, so I have to keep, like, I, I just will know, I will know, like when I have that security, like when I'm like, when I'm not getting a text and I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm good. I'm, you know, and I'm not like, oh, uh, uh, uh. I can and that's never do the, that. Yeah. That's like, the text. Where's yes. The text? Where's see, the... see. And I've learned about like avoidant attachment yes, styles. That's what I was going to say. It's avoidant anxious, attachment styles. Yeah. And so right. I'm like, okay, right now this is about me. This has nothing to do with this person. Absolutely. I'm just going to own my stuff and I'm going to do my self-care and I'm going to journal and I'm going to reach out to a friend and I'm going to take care of myself because there's something in me that's needing something and I can fulfill yes. it for myself through the network I've created, through my own you know, creative mind, through my knowledge that I've learned through therapy. Like, I think we limit what we can do for ourselves in so many ways and ethical non-monogamy has taught me I, I don't have to limit myself and I don't have to limit someone else. My face is like, my mouth it's is like on the floor. It's very empowering, honestly. It's I've almost, learned so much by choosing this path, honestly. It's almost like ma- helping you um, create a, a secure attachment style. Yes. And that is isn't that the goal? So that when yes. I have someday, if I do ever, who knows, I'm open. 
have a monogamous relationship, it'll be very different. It'll be because very you'll different. already know how to be. You'll have a secure attachment yes. style. You'll know how to like self soothe. Yes, you yes. won't need some, someone else to make you happy. Yeah, I won't need someone to be, be like constantly reassuring me that they're not going to abandon me, that they're not going to disappear. And even if they do disappear, I'll be okay because I've got my back. Right. I'm obsessed with this right now. Good. Okay. I have this, this is, I'm like my. I'm like so quiet right now because. Did I'm I get to tell the backstory of my podcast? Story? Or did I already? Oh, do oh that? yes, yes. Did you? Did you start? We have well, to. Okay, I, okay, okay. I, I just okay. want to say. I just want to say. After yes, any please. relationship, after any relationship, you have a choice to invest into yourself, as you know this. Yes, of course. Or, or to again try and get those deeds met from someone else. Right. So, so what I have chosen to do more than not, I would say, is invest into myself, and so. I had what I call the honeymoon stage after my relationship where, you know, everything was just more exciting and delicious and colorful and magical. And and, and that's because I was coming more into myself. And I recently walked upon or stumbled upon a quote and I love this quote. And the quote is this, the more that you find purpose in your life, the less you need pleasure, right? So let's sit with that around dating. If we are constantly using dating for pleasure and relationships for pleasure, maybe we need to do some internal work around, well, that. maybe I need to find more purpose in my life because I have found so much more purpose in my life this last year by doing my podcasting. And finally, thank God my business came back because during COVID I'm a photographer <laughs> and like everything was shut down. So that was a huge part of my identity and that was totally taken away from me. So during COVID, I just went down this dark rabbit hole of like dating, 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 and like had this bench of guys. And like, I just was so needy of that. I'm like, wow, that was really an unhealthy attachment, anxious part of me coming out. Right. And, and, and I, now I know that, so I I don't choose to, to do that. I'm not dating to be validated. I'm not dating so that my ego can be like, you're a good person. You're pretty, you're sexy, blah, blah, blah. So uh, anyway, so what I now understand about ethical non-monogamy, about my honeymoon stage, like all of these choices are so that I can get to that secure place in my attachment so that I can, yeah. if I choose, if it, if the universe allows it, have maybe a more traditional monogamous relationship, or maybe I'll just choose to continue to have like a more polyamorous mindset. Sure. I mean, I think there's that openness, right? When we're open in general in life to receive I think that's much, that's where we really find the magic. Then where we're like on a mission, on a mission, on a mission. And so you, many of my you, clients knowing are, you so many of my clients has are. reminded me that where you're like, you know, just show up, <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Just don't, do it. don't think about all the, right. because I'm like oh, details, okay. details, details. Cause that's just how I, as an artist, I see all the details, yeah, but sometimes right. I just need to do this shit. Just show up and do it. Just show up. Cause 90% of life is showing up. Okay. I think. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I have a question that's been driving me nuts. Okay. So when you, um, if you don't mind, Nancy, it, yeah, like this. Yes. so when you, when you are, I can't even say it in your, in that, what is it? Ethical, not ethical, E-N. non-monogamy. E-N-M. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So when you start, when you're looking, do, is this like a, it's something that you like, let's say you're on match.com. You, do you, do you say it when you never you're used it in my life, but sure. Okay. okay oh yeah. I put it on my bio. I do. Okay, put in your bio. Yeah. So, like, how does someone like? Let's say I wanted to, my a client to start doing this. Mm-hmm. How do I? How do I do? Like, how do I? Or let's say I wanted to start doing this. How do I? Is there a <laughs> website? Is there a web? Is there a, a match dot com for this? Is there like a, a dating app for this? I mean, how well, I- OkCupid is more open to it. They do actually oh. have options on OkCupid where you can check ethically non monogamous open but relationship. I feel- but I think you know I use I've used historically all the apps, uh, and I just find that if I put E N M people you know, know. E- ENM ask that type of thing because okay. it, you know there's a continuum to things right like everybody yeah. just because you identify as ethically non-monogamous doesn't mean that it's not a one-size-fits-all type of disclaimer mm-hmm. so I try to explain yeah I'm ethically non-monogamous but I still want connection I'm still looking for relationships I'm not just right. looking for sex buddies right right because that's what I thought it was no so I'm so glad I did this and I'm so glad I asked because it is so much better it's so much it's it's fantastic what you're explaining. Right, right. I think, you know, it, 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 I've been on this um, journey for three years now. And I think what I have learned, because I I am a deep person. I, I, I you know, shallow conversation, I, I don't have time for it. Mm-hmm. So how can I date 
shallowy, Ugh. shallowy, shallowy, <laughs> shallowy. Yeah, I can't do superficially, that. Right? Superficially, superficially. Thank yeah, you, you thank you for helping me with my grammar. So, yeah. uh, you know, I can't, I can't do that. I've just learned yeah. about myself. I can't do that for a long term deal. So I have to, and relationships in general have depth and stimulation beyond sexual. So ethical non-monogamy works for me as long as I own that and put that out to people. And if they're not looking for that, then they'll go away. And if they're cool with that, they'll stick around. Yeah, I love it. And that goes with anything. Don't oh, you yeah. think? I mean, if someone doesn't want a relationship, they they don't they don't stick around either. Correct. Oh, so traditional like, monogamous relationships. Right, exactly. I think what we exactly. need to stop saying is that if you're ethically non-monogamous, you're not having relationships. I Absolutely. So I just screwed that up. I just fucked that up right there. Yeah. Okay, it's like so if you're there's a yeah. I think that yes. it, that's one way we limit. Um, that experience is that we just assume it's about hooking up and it's not, it's yes. not. So we oh need to stop God. saying, if you're looking for a relationship, I'm looking right. for relationships, ships, 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 just not, just not the, just not of, one solo, just not one monogamous. Like relationships. Correct. I oh desire God. deep relationships. Ships. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. This Plural. is, this is the best episode ever. <laughs> Burr. You're gonna have so much juicy content for I'm, your. Oh my now. god! I'm so excited. Well, I'm hear how sending, they respond. No, I'm sending them to you. You have a new job now. <laughs> now we're gonna have to we're gonna have to work on this, Miss Sadie. Okay. That's all there is to it. Okay. Because I really feel like you. This is something for you. Oh, I have a lot of passion around it. Lot, you Especially have, for women, because women. Okay, I did. I, I did an episode. You know, Coach T. Yes. Anthony. I love so, him. He's coming on my yeah. show next two weeks. Oh, wonderful, wonderful! I had him on my show, and the episode was called "Dating Like a Dude." And, you know, and we kind of played on it a little bit. The I think I heard idea, it. I listened yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah, the whole yeah. idea is that you can just have a more light, free, playful entry into relationships. That, you know, kind of go with the flow like guys do. I mean, they're Women having can't a lot do of that. fun. But we can if we practice it. But right. we can if we you can do anything if you do it. Repetition is key in life. You can learn any new skill if you just do it over and over and over again. I just want to squeeze some of my clients and be like. Just change your mindset. My like, girls, come on. They need to flip it. They need to, yes. like, I just, what are I just you needing that. right now? Yes. Or you need this so much from someone else. Because really, it's about you. And until you figure it out, you are going to repeat the same thing again. Absolutely. And you know that. Of course. And it's just like you just finally accept it. It's like, okay, I surrender. <laughs> Take I surrender Take on my ethically non-monogamous journey. I'm going to do the work. Thank you. Got I'm it. Call, I'm calling Sadie. <laughs> She knows her shit. I do. <laughs> I know. I, you do. My own I mean, this shit. has been the most like eye-opening episode. I mean, I have a lot of guests. You know, this is fantastic. I'm so happy you're here. Good. I feel good. I mean, we know each other, so that helps. Yeah, it's fabulous. Really but did fun. I did I do what I was supposed to do for you? Can we talk about so the podcast, everyone? So listen to me, listener and listeners, everybody who was out there or one person, whatever. Um, listen to Sadie's divorced and happy podcast, please. Yes, because again, it it, it has a a spicy, out-of-the-box, playful tone around life after relationships, whether you've been divorced or you've been in a long-term relationship. I have lots of married listeners. Yeah. They love my podcast because it reminds them of their own journey with relationships, sexuality, emotional intimacy, you know, a, a, an array of other topics. I don't just talk about these topics, although I have a lot of passion around them. So yes, yes it is a breezy, fun journey when you, uh, every Thursday, join me. I drop new content every Thursday. Sadie's and divorced your Instagram and page. Your Instagram and my Instagram page. Instagram yeah, you can find my Instagram page, which I have a lot of fun with. I'm having more fun with these yes. reels, Jennifer. Thanks to I know. inspiration. The and reels. the carousels. Love the, carousels. the carousels. So you can find me on Instagram at Sadie's Divorced and Happy. You can also find me on Facebook at Sadie's Divorced and Happy. And of course, I have a website, divorcedandhappy.net, where you can find all of my episodes for free if you want to subscribe to something and, and everything's going to be in the show notes oh yeah of course yes everything's going to be in the show notes and um your website's beautiful thank you yes 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 so um miss thing we're gonna go because i can't okay. keep you forever i think oh we did perfect timing here okay. per usual Wonderful. um i loved having you everything you guys is everything's gonna be in the show notes um do you have a little nugget i do me a favor say that one quote you said before sure one more time the quote sure. for me what was it when we find purpose we need less pleasure So if you are using dating as entertainment solely for entertainment or pleasure, you need to just kind of check in, like, where can I find more purpose in my life? Where can I find more connection that's going to enrich my life and and give me more purpose so that I'm not constantly seeking that out 
that pleasure out in, in, in dating. And I think we can, we can do that so easily. And I did that. I have absolutely done I that. I, and I own that. And it, it didn't fulfill me, Jennifer. Neither. It didn't I did fulfill me. Thing. I did the same exact thing. So. Yep, I did too. Girl, mm-hmm. I loved having you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay, y'all, you know where to find me. JenniferHervitz.com. It's easy. It's just me with the dot com. And um, do something fabulous this week for yourself. And, um, you know, go check out the ethical non monogamy. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. E-N-M, That's baby. what you can do. Check it out. E-N-M. Check it out and see um, what it's all about. And as usual, you guys, peace, love, and so much truth. Thank you for being here. And we'll see you next week on Doing Relationships Right. Bye. <laughs>